Hey guys, it's Waifu Gate here again. So today we're going to be doing another episode of uh, weekly viewer decks. Yeah, viewer weekly decks, something like that. Uh, we put it out each Saturday. Uh, it's a pretty chill um, series. Basically, what we do is we take the list. It's it's if you guys are familiar with the other series I do with the deck meta analysis for MTG Goldfish, where I look at uh, you know top lists there that went like five zero. It's the same thing where I critique it and like go over card choices, what I would change with the list, why I think someone might include the things from the sideboard. And it's just a nice exercise for me so I can kind of get better at deck building because I understand the list and then maybe still critique it even if I might not be 100% correct just to kind of get those muscles working, the cogs turning, so to speak. Uh, that's what this series is about. So if you guys are into that, that's what this video is gonna be. Uh, and this series in particular are viewer deck lists. They're not lists that like performed super well. They might have performed well, but that's a side point. These are just lists that viewers from my Twitch chat want feedback on. So it's basically free deck checks. Usually I have a like 2,500 waifu channel points thing for Twitch where you can have me look at a list and I can make suggestions. And this is basically that for free, and then I get to put it up on YouTube so other people can kind of enjoy the content um, as well. So that's what we'll be going into today. Um, we do have an MTGA code giveaway in the video. Uh, it'll be hidden somewhere. It'll be in red text. And I keep a like leaderboard for the stream. It's just something fun to do. And I might be shifting this out of the videos. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I've been doing a lot of um, thought work behind it, whether I want to continue doing this or do something else to do the giveaways, like whether that's on stream or um, some type of competition where I can give away like three or four codes to one person who wins and then like not like a tournament, but sort of like that where maybe people submit a list and um, like just a bunch of lists and I pick one of them that are really cool and then make a YouTube video on that and then the person who won gets like three codes or something. I'm going to try to figure it out, but until then, I'll keep putting them in the videos here and there uh, until I figure out exactly how I feel about it. Um, so code giveaway, uh, first come, first serve, and um, you can put what you get in the comments below if you'd like to. Uh, and that being said, I'm going to dig into the viewer decks now. So let's dig into the list. First here we have Adam's Kefnet. Now this is a deck that I've already done a deck guide on. And I've sort of changed the list um, slightly as well. And I'll update the list, of course, for the YouTube video on like what I've changed about it. Um, so digging into this list, like how it functions and whatnot, um, because I worked with Adam with this list, trying to get it into a better form that made more sense compared to the original, which was we were running like really terrible cards like uh, Callus. I can't remember what the card was. It's like Callus. It's not Reunion, but it's it's one where Callus Dismissal or something like where it bounces something at sorcery speed, bounces a non-land permanent, and then you amass for one. It didn't really add enough pressure to the table like the one one compared to losing the tempo of just like if it drew a card two, it would be awesome, but it doesn't. And basically, the idea behind this deck is to use God Eternal Kefnet. Um, some may refer to, to them as Kevin, right? Because it's fun. We have a meme on the uh, stream about it, I think. Like if you do exclamation point Kevin, you get like a cool uh, JPEG. But that aside, um, you get to, that's why all of the other cards in this deck, aside from Kefnet, um, are instants and sorceries. All right, got me a link, okay. I will try to include this. Um, so, other than that, like our win cons are Enter the God Eternal and Swinging with Kefnet. We get, I think I also cut one Heartless Act and maybe an Eliminate in the Grim Tutor for two commence the end game. So we have something that hits a little bit harder because we do eventually get a lot of card advantage, like, you know, casting extra copies of chemisters, etc. Usually the amass hits really hard. Like usually it's like an eight, eight or nine, nine, like you get really, really big, really fast. So I felt like that was worth it over um, 
just casting Grim Tutor to look for Kefnit because that's very slow and dirtily. And we can't even discount this by two mana with Kefnit. So the whole idea is just to have a really fluid deck, uh, some hand hate. If we have double hand hate with like Kefnit, it's really, really nice. And if we can draw on our opponent's turn with like Opt and draw into like, you know, an Eliminate, we can two for one the opponent by casting a discounted Eliminate for like one mana, uh, blowing up like, you know, a. I don't know, like a, not a Spellbreaker, because we can't do that on their turn, and not a Garruk's Harbinger, because that's Hexproof from Black. But you get the idea, like, you can blow up um, extra stuff. Like, you get to two-for-one them on creatures, so, like, Bap-Bap, and that's almost like a board wipe. Or you could get a board wipe on their turn as well, discount it by two mana, say odd, and then do even next turn if you absolutely have to. And if you exile your own Kefnet with this, you can put them three cards from the from the top so you have a lot of recurring threats um with this type of a deck um and there are lots of like little tech cards like cling to dust where we can exile an uro and deal with some of the recursion off of ecd main deck and then have sideboard options that are slightly better at dealing with that second and third game if we get into a third game um so yeah aside from the changes from cut cut uh to commence it's pretty much the same as i had it before and it just it just tries to generate a lot of value. It's very fun. Um, if you discount this, it's super brutal too because you can make like the commence the end token, uh, commence the end game token like super big. It's just crazy, man. It goes really really fast. See that the downsides are like if the opponent continues to pump out threats after threats after threats, and they have something like a crassus that we can't grab with remorse, they can kind of get out of hand as well. And we don't have things like Shark Typhoon to pressure Teferi end of turn. Um, and Teferi shuts off Kefnit. So like we really have to remorse the Kefnit, uh, remorse the Teferi, um, kill it with the Eliminate, etc. And they might have answers to that, which is really, really tough. Um, so I would say that Teferi is our like biggest weakness with this type of a list. Um, we have two Blast Zones as well to deal with aggro. This is pretty good against... Um, uh, cat oven as well it's one of our few answers to that uh witch's oven combo because we can just blow up the uh the oven and like maybe snipe a another one drop or two or like you know if we need to take out priest we can put one counter on this two counters for mayhem double but we have a lot of answers to that it's just it's hard to answer artifacts uh sideboard wise i've got two negates three grasp these are for like Anything that runs like questing beasts, etc. And if we get multiple values off of this, it's really, really crazy. Like if we opt on their turn to find grasp in response to them casting this casting Nissa, it's like over. Alright. Um, like they they just get two for one, you blow up their uh Nissa, and then you hold it for like questing beast, or you hold it for the next Nissa, your actual you're like your other copy. And then if your opponent tries to sandbag enough threats, you just force them out with uh, thought distortion. The weakness to the strategy is, of course, if they have like Elder Gargaroths and like Night Pack Ambushers, etc., in order to fight us um, with creature threats on top of non creatures. And this is super weak to Crassus top decks as well. Um, funny thing is, like, we can opt and distort on their turn for like five mana, like one mana for opt. And then this is discounted by two mana because of Kefnet, and then you pay four. So if you have enough to cast Thought Distortion with the Opt, you can like kind of cheese your way into it and take away their draw for the turn, which is super funny. Or like in response to them casting Crisis, you can exile their hand at the at the end of their turn, and then uh, you know like those complex plays are what I like about Magic sometimes. I got Thought Distortion uh, reversaled earlier today with Narset's reversal, and I was pretty sad, so I stopped playing this list. Actually, I think that was when I was playing Esper, but um, anyway, uh, back to the point. Soots are for um, aggro like mono green, and then Cries are for like Sakdos and the new, um, uh, the new uh, Mardu Winota lists. Like it's very good against that list because you can exile the. Uh, rebooters that try to grab your cards from your hands stuff like that so very very nice and, and good this is just for like nissa's uh you don't really want to do it to crisis um tails end might also be a good replacement for these depending on if you want to target teferi a little bit more or um if you want to deal with uh 
Vighting Nissa a little bit easier, or Casualties if you're afraid of that card, stuff like that. Or Reversals if you're afraid of Thought Distortions, but I don't know if we can play around that too much. It's a pretty fun deck though, I like it. Alright, so this is Strider's List, and I have to think real hard on how this deck actually functions. Looks like Banefire is the win con potentially, one of them at least. No sideboard, so it's a best of one cheese list, like usual. Um, Strider has a formula for decks for best of one, pretty much. I don't know why he's not busting into best of three now that like Nexus is gone, though. I feel like he could probably end up doing that at some point. Um, so Guardian Idol enters the battlefield tapped. Tap one mana. Um... And then two mana, it can become a 2-2 golem artifact creature until end of turn. So interesting, like you can pressure walkers here. Mind stones are, of course, good ramp. Two heliods for shrine decks. I think that's usually the reasoning behind this. Um, when he, he includes this for historic, because shrines for some reason in best of one are very, very popular. With like uh, search for Azkanta and some other tools that the deck has access to. Very nice. Um, Ashiox. For self mill, I believe. Um, and just to mess with people, I guess, in best of one. Stops like scape shift, uh, which is hilarious. It stops like cultivate, mig uh, migration path, all kinds of cards. It just shuts off. Uh, Golos, field of the dead, that type of deal. Well, it's probably just main tech uh, hate. Also, it works with uh, Fall of Thran, I believe, is the other combo. It's just being able to have a main deck sideboard card basically against certain matchups plus being able to uh, combo off here between our sets makes sense you can find combo pieces i feel like this might be a little hard to cast but you know strider usually shoves this into mtg on curve i'm pretty sure if we do that it won't be terrible um you know in regards to casting it maybe you don't need it on three let's you search for combo pieces you settles or shatters so six board wipes total usually runs like eight but sometimes you have to make exceptions so mind stones and our idols for ramp uh we've also got smothering tithe for ramp which is pretty interesting and then shatters so whenever an opponent draws a card that may that player may pay two um if the player doesn't you create a uh, colorless treasure artifact token with tap sacrifice this artifact add one mana so they're able like strider also ramps with this in some aspects here or whoever's playing strider stack oh there's another there's two more board wipes here so two three four five six seven eight so he is running eight that's funny we just talked about that um and then three th fall of thran which are combo pieces so the idea here is destroy all lands um and then we also have lands after that, so we can like cast X cards. Not, not X cards, but we can, with two lands off of Fall of Thran, for example, um, we can cast like Settle pretty easily. We can cast Tithe. We can cast a Shatter if we get two white mana back with, you know, two Mind Stones or Guardian Idols if we already have those out. So it just allows you to answer multiple things which is kind of cool. I don't like Settle the Wreckage with Fall of Thran because it doesn't make a lot of sense. But I guess if you're going to Settle, get a bunch of cards from their library, like their lands out, all of their basics, and then Fall of Thran after that, and then Exile everything. Like if the stars align and like the moon is bright, um, it makes sense, I guess, when that happens. And then Teferi makes sense too, like just, you know, so you don't have to deal with counter spells. Hee <laughs> hee. Get that. So it's pretty fun. It looks pretty interesting. I miss the old uh, Fall of Thran, like Remorseful Cleric type dealios. So I'd rate this pretty much fun out of 10. It looks pretty, pretty interesting. I'd be curious to see what the win rate is over like 100 games. And just another four mana board wipe. Yeah. You can't get it to work, rip. So don't, don't spend wild cards, guys. Only play it if you have it. Uh, maybe I'll look at it at one point and try to tweak it a bit. It looks fun. I feel like there's something missing, for sure. Not sure about the Narsets. Some kind of Garbo. Just like, I am a hard-to-cast card. Hello. And she doesn't combo or anything. 
yeah, I think this is probably the weakest part of the deck, honestly. Like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, even having something like Haphazard Bombardment or something, like, to pressure the lands even more or something, but with Ashiok, Fourth Teferi, yeah, to combo off a little bit more. Makes sense. I'd even, like, maybe... Yeah. It just depends on how you want to go. In fire, yeah. Fall of Theran doesn't work unless you're running a mostly colorless deck and or... Yeah, I think that's a really bold statement. <laughs> I think you can make Fall of Theran work in like a million different ways, like consistently, like I don't know. I I remember like Jim Dave uh was it Jim Davis? I think it was Jim Davis who brought like Esper Fall of Theran to like a Fandom Legends tournament and did okay with it. Like it just depends. I think the idea, like, so the idea behind the Ashiok here to Blend Child, because I'm talking to Twitch chat as I'm recording the YouTube video, is that this is a card that can come down and threaten to combo uh, if it's not answered, right? And it does something else. Like, this shuts off Migration Path, it shuts off Cultivate, shuts off Golos, um, shuts off a lot of Search, it sh sh shuts off Fabled Passage from the opponent too, right? And everyone's running that with Field of the Dead. So saying that this doesn't do anything compared to Soul Guide is just incorrect. And maybe even if something else is slightly more efficient or whatever else, is it efficient plus doing something else that's also good compared to Ashiok? Or is it just your preference? Because saying that it absolutely doesn't work is just wrong. Because that's not the case. Because I'm pretty sure if I develop Ashiok here, and then I develop Fall of Thran, especially with the Mind Stones and everything else, I can combo it, yeah? So, like, basically right now we're trying to figure out different options. Maybe it is, like, replacing our sets with, like, Soul Guide Lanterns or something else. Like, maybe Karn could be interesting. But saying that it's the only option is just very, like, narrow-minded, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Like, saying I would prefer to do this because of X and Y, which you've sort of done, but you prefaced it with um, sort of language that might turn a lot of people off. And maybe I'm presenting language that's turning a lot of people off. But if that makes sense. But yeah, I would say that Narset is probably the weirdest one here. And we could replace it with like maybe two Karns and another Ashiok or another Teferi or whatever. And like have different options in the sideboard like Meteor Golems or whatever else to deal with things that we might not be able to deal with otherwise. Um, you said, quote-unquote, Fall of Thran doesn't work unless you're running this or that, which is saying that the... It's saying that it doesn't... It's not the, like... You're saying that that was the only option, but now you're pivoting. So... We could get into like minute details and uh, phrasing and being uh, pedantic and such, but I don't really want to dig into it that much. Um, like we can, but that would be a whole different discussion on something that's not this deck and this deck's... Like we could compare cards for sure. Like I don't hate the idea of Karn, for example, because we're in best of one. So to summarize here for this deck, um, I would say that uh, Narset's dropping these for Karns, potentially, uh, or an extra Teferi, um, just so we have more ways to combo off and more ways to... Um, just like Narset just doesn't really fit for the most part. Oh, with the deck check, I see what you're saying now, Damon. Okay, I understand. Um... So yeah, uh, probably just taking out Narset's because she, Narset does allow you to fetch for combo pieces, but not necessarily in a fashion that you want to. And she also restricts you with colors, like two blue, one colorless. Your colorless ramp isn't really going to do anything there. Whereas like Teferi, at least there's two different types of colors with like the white, so it might not be as restrictive. 
And you're already kind of restricting yourself with that with Ashiok as well. But you don't need to slam her on three anyway. She just kind of helps disrupt, so... Um, but yeah, I, I would just say pitch the Narsets for combinations of like two Karn, four Teferi, or three Karns, so we can get like Soul Guide Lanterns from the sideboard and continue to still uh, combo off here. Um, so we got Paper Bag's deck here, which is not based off of a Strider Stone deck. Um, there's no way that that's what happened here. So this is sort of a mixture between Strider's decks, I think, if I'm reading into this correctly, where um, you use like Stitcher's supplies and other such things like bindings to self-mill and Mire Tritons to self-mill. Um, and then you eventually get Omniscience into your graveyard. And then you put that into play with Eerie Ultimatum. That's the whole deal. And you also have like Fall of Thran combo with like Remorseful Cleric, so you can take your opponent's lands out of the game, so to speak. And you also have a lot of like ways to get lands back faster than your opponent too, with like bindings and whatnot. So if you're not against aggro specifically, it's seems like it has a lot of um ways to slow down the opponent if they're on control as well if they need more mana than than two or three now the sort of strategy with fall of thran works both ways um like if your opponent for example has uh what are they called mind stones or other types of ramp that stay on the field and you don't like bounce them or destroy them with maelstrom pulse prior to fall of thraning like it's not that big of a deal because this isn't the main point of the deck this is just a cute combo that paper bag is sort of included on top of the normal combo which is like scholar of the lost trove um when it enters the battlefield you may cast instant sorcery or artifact card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost if it was cast in this way, exile it instead of putting it to the graveyard again. So you do this with like Eerie Ultimatum, you do it with Omniscience, etc. Like you can combo off a few different ways, and you also have Umbrial Rites here to cast this from the graveyard while you're self milling. So you don't have to ever worry about like milling yourself out because um, you have Underrealm Lich. Like this card says, if you would draw a card instead, do something else. So the mill yourself win condition like if or loot loss condition i should should say uh doesn't apply because you skip your drawing so you never actually lose from milling yourself out which is interesting and you can just keep playing stuff and cycling with your graveyard and, and being fun um while producing a way to win so and you've also got masterminds acquisition to uh grab something from your sideboard and and continue comboing off and such it also has Field of the Dead. Nice. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Does it? Oh, let's see it. Oh, one Field of the Dead. Okay. Makes sense. Like, just as an alternative win con, or if you're going to Eerie Ultimatum and get back, like, three or four lands, if you have met the conditions at that point in the game, which you probably have, you get Field of the Dead procs as well. Well, that's pretty interesting. I like that. And then if you have Fall of Thoran and you get your lands back and such, and then you get all of that stuff with uh, Eerie Ultimatum after you exile your opponent's library. I like the little combinations of cards. What I don't like about this list is the... And like now that I thought about it for half a second, I don't hate it as much, but the inconsistency in which we have like two ofs here and there. But that makes more sense with Eerie, since you want to split up your resources with that. Oh, there's an Emergency Ultimatum and one Eerie Ultimatum. Okay, that changes things too. That's very interesting, actually. And then you probably have extra copies of that stuff with Masterminds as well. And this is a Masterminds sideboard, so this is set up specifically for best of one. Um, like the deck that it's not inspired by, by like Strider Stone. Um, so we've got an extra eerie ultimatum in the great in the in the sideboard. Interesting. And then this for the self mill win con too, which is fun. I don't know if I agree with the rivers rebuke, but it could make a lot of sense since you have Omni and you could just um you could just cast this for free and then cast Omni and then cast your whole hand again for free and get a bunch of different procs. So um what would I change about this? Probably in best of one, I would probably find room for one more sweeper. So when you go to plus one, like the amount of times that I saw you, paper bag, 
and this is like bad uh, thought process. This is a bad thought process. So don't like don't hold this to any like merit of any significance. But when you plus one for languish and you don't hit it like five times in a row, it's like I really want the fourth copy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> that's rough, dude. <laughs> it's rough when you don't hit that. Um, it's also something that you don't get to get back off of Eerie Ultimatum and stuff like that too, but you do get to minus three Tamiyo for it if you need it. It's just like instead of... I don't know what I would replace it with though. Drop a Meyer, yeah. I just drop like both Myers and go like bindings of the Titan plus Languish or something. So you have like more consistency or like an extra rejuvenator for ramp. Because you really just want to ramp with this list and kind of get there and have chumpers and stuff. Feels like it. So like maybe one more sweeper for best of one, maybe two. But I don't know what else you would run, like maybe a one of extinction event or something. After uh yeah, I don't think the Myers make a lot of sense when you have better cards like Bindings that mill for more and also do something else. Because these only mill for two, right? Yeah, it's just trash. Mills for three, I think. Yeah, both players do. And then you can exile like Uros or... Like this also plays into Fall of Thran if you line it up correctly or if you have it with Yuri. Like it's so gross, man. There's so many little mini combos and I like that a lot. But I'd say, yeah, just ditch the Myers for more consistency, like maybe an extra pulse or languish or whatever you feel is, is another good card for you. Zero drop exile graveyard over cleric. Yeah, you could. Good. The crypt. Because then you can cobble it off a little bit faster too. Or you could do Soul Guide Lantern, like a one drop instead. And like then you can spot removal as well. Like if there's just a lonely Uro or something that someone might threaten to like uh, escape with, you can just exile one card and then hold it for um, fall. And it's only one mana. And you can draw with it if you need to. Right? Emergent can hit artifacts that are colorless. Yeah, no, you can't. True. So you can't really set up that combo anymore, I guess. That's well you have options at least. Which is which is nice. Like it depends on if you want to set it up for hard casting this or doing it a different way. That combo plus omni, I see. Okay. That makes sense. Like, if you didn't draw one of your other combo pieces, which is unlikely sometimes anyway. Yeah, they can pick to give you Omni or the uh, or the Wombo combo. Yeah, I can see that being really sought after. I'd probably just keep that in then. It's really not that bad of a card anyway. Like, it's a 2-1 flyer. It can block something. You need a 2 early game. That's that's probably what I would change though, is just dropping these for like another binding and like another languish or something. Or another pulse. Or languish. Whatever you feel like you need more of. Self milling or the other. Alright, so we've got uh from Josh, a mono green list. Looks like a stack. Um we've got I don't know if this is a sideboard. Or if this is like actually, um, if this is more or less like a, because uh, some of these look like sideboard cards and other ones look like maybe board, if that makes sense. I also can't tell how many lands are in this. So this is four, right? So four, eight, 12, 16, um, 20, 21, 22, 23. That seems really low. Even with ramp, I don't like that. So I would say like my biggest issue with this is needing more lands, potentially like 25. Hit top left. Like here. Oh, back to deck list, I see. Ah, nice. Okay, cool. So yeah, now 23. Okay, nice. Yeah, good call. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I'd say that this is a pretty aggressive top end. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, 
funny guy. Okay, you guys can unsubscribe to the channel now, it's fine. Um, so, <laughs> I would say, like, dropping some of the top end, like, I would say drop, like, two mammoths. Or drop the four runners, like, one, two. I'd just drop this all for, like, two lands and some other type of ramp, like Paradise Druids, like, more copies, or... No, they have Paradise Druids. For, like, more Love Strucks, just, like, lower the curve a bit. And then we've got, like, Beast Whisperer and I'll Hide for Ox. I kind of like it. Like, it's kind of spicy. All right, sounds good. It's Strider. I'll catch you later, man. Thanks for dropping by for a minute. I will see you again soon. So I'd say, like, drop just two, at least two of these top end cards or two more lands. And then, like, change the sideboard to be an actual sideboard. Like, I think instead of running, like, cards that get you more lands in your sideboard, it should be, like, Soul Guide Lanterns. Um, Ranger's Guiles are fine. And then, like, maybe something to keep up with, like, the grindy matchups, like maybe Vivian Planeswalkers or something else. Like, you can do a million things. And I'd like to see Gem Razor somewhere in here, but, like, maybe that's me shifting it more toward, um, more toward, you know, regular mono green. It's just, like, this curve doesn't make any sense to me. Like, having a lot of, like, six drops when we only have 23 lands, even with Paradise Druid. And we have, like, Biogenic Ooze, which is, like, so greedy <laughs> with a list without a lot of lands. Yeah, and there's no questing beast either. Like, like drop all of this, probably. Maybe keep your favorite one out of all of these. Like, if you really like the Feast King, keep them. Yeah, could be lacking cards and just using what they want to. But I would say if it's a wild card situation, like where you're shy on stuff, I would just chop off this top end here. Go more lands and just more cards that make sense. Like bark hides are great. Craft another one. Like just get four in there. Um, Visionary could be like a four of if you really wanted, since it replaces itself and ramps into something big. And then just make sure you kind of want what your top end is there. Like try to make sure that you actually um, know what's up with it. And plummets are pretty bad. Like I think there's like a uncommon or a common card that destroys target flying or enchantment creature like an enchantment or a creature so i think it's a budget list though so back i think this person uh submitted the list uh as their brew and also as a budget list so if they don't have questing beasts then how can they run it like you can say get good scrub but that doesn't help <laughs> right like <laughs> You didn't say that, so Beck didn't say that for the record. I was just saying, like, before anyone else said it, I wanted to nip that in the bud. Um, my mono U is budget cur currently? Nice, yeah. So I'd say ditch the district guides for, like, two soul guide lanterns, and then these for the other cards that can destroy enchantments and flying creatures. And then chuck this stuff, like, maybe more fight effects, but not open the gates. Open the gates is terrible. And then this is like, yeah, I don't know if this really makes sense, but like the sideboard needs a lot of, I'd say like, look at another mono green list and try to come up with a sideboard with that. Like the harpooners are my favorite thing about it. And they're not even that great. But yeah, I would say, let's say chuck these and more, more of a lower curve. Um, questing beasts would be great if you have them. Sure. Everything else kind of makes sense, like primal mites, sure. Prey pawns, sure. I think these are supposed to be uh, primal mites, but they don't have any more copies of it. Um, one scavenging ooze, two scavenging oozes, so that's not terrible. Stone coils are also good, like stone coils instead of some of this, because that can fill out the curve really nice, because if you have a lot of mana, you can dump them into the stone coils. They can't be bounced by Teferi, it's just very nice. But like I said, that's like not a really budget-friendly thing to, to suggest. They don't have any. But even if it's like one or two copies of stone coil, like running the higher tier cards, like the things that make the most sense, which also synergize with your game plan, uh, even if you're trying to do something a little different with 
with mono green, uh, especially if you're on a budget, would make sense. So, but definitely like two more lands and chop off some of this top end and better cards. That's what I would suggest here. Otherwise, it looks kind of okay. Like mono green's not really my thing, but um, all right. So there, there we go. There's there are the lists. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. We had some pretty uh, interesting brews today. Um, I especially liked the mix-up between the Strider Stone decks with the Fall of Thoran, the two ultimatums. I feel like only having two of those is sort of rough, but with the amount of self-mill that deck has, I feel like it has some potential and it just needs some min-maxing to be like, you know, uh, like a 50 percenter like where it's you win 50 percent of your games but you're having a lot of fun with it so you can do like just grind constructed event and try to combo off and have fun i think that's where it falls into um and the other strider stone deck was also kind of okay um so i'll have links for those lists down below so they're exportable really easy to find and and test out and whatnot and i will uh i'll catch you guys in the next video uh, there'll be an end panel if you feel like subscribing. It really helps the channel out, and you'll get updates on the content. Um, and then if you like some of the other series, there's there'll be like another like you know most recently thing video if you want to check out some more stuff. So that being said, I will catch you guys uh, next time.